So this is actually a really old question. So this is kind of goes back to staffing versus corporate, or now you, you can look at it as corporate versus internal, right? Uh, I think it's, it's, you can look at it as a competition, or you can look at it as basically who's going to tell the, the story the best, the fastest. So what I mean by that is how fast can you get a great story in front of a candidate? So mm-hmm. speed and quality are really important. So how do you beat the other person, whether or not it's a staffing firm or an RPO or MSP or internal or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Your job is like, how do we figure out speed and then putting a quality message, highly personalized quality message in front of that person. I think those folks, those that get really good at that win just because they got there first. If for no other reason. You know, somebody gets, you know, for whatever reason, their process or whatever, it just takes too long. Three weeks later, that person's already got another job. Right. Right. You know. Absolutely. Speed is, is, is the name of the game there. So, so that's the intersection points of speed, quality, and great story, right? Yeah. The best way to handle it is to be as brutally honest as possible. Like, you know, sometimes candidates just shop and, and it's, it's not personal. Uh, we, we do take it very personally, but they're just shopping. They want to, they want to stay at their current company. Um, they want to get an offer letter so they can go back into their boss and say, Hey, I, I don't really want to take another job. The boss will give them a counter offer and I say where they're at. Okay. We wish that weren't the case, but it is, it is often the case. I think the thing is, is you build your business case for them, for the position. You do it. You put everything out on the table. You give them the best offer you can, and you just stand by and just say, hey, it, this is the offer we can give you. We believe in the company. We believe that you'll be great in the company. But you know what? If, if you have another offer that you feel is a better path for you, then we need to celebrate that. Like, I don't want to burn the bridge. And I think this is what great recruiters do well, is they don't get, they don't burn the bridge. They might be hurt or even maybe angry right so you might be hurt you might be angry you might be all of those things but with a candidate you treat them like hey listen you got to do what's in your best interest top that's it and if you feel like that other thing or the end do it going back to the same company is in your best interest i'm going to still be here and i want to talk to you in nine months from now when you're frustrated again and and you want to change jobs okay so like if you feel like that's a better path for you i celebrate that It's it's all comes down to micro experiences, uh, Paige, is uh, how can you create something that's highly personalized to that candidate? So you find out things that they're into. So this isn't just about the job. This is about like a shopping experience. So your favorite shopping experience, what was that like? Uh, it was, it's someone that took interest in, you know, you as a person, you know, like they took interest in you about a hundred years ago, I, uh, I got a seersucker suit from Brooks Brothers and uh, the guy I bought it from, I just really liked, like I went back and talked to him like several times uh, through the years and I just liked the guy. Like, you know, and like, I think that's the point is you become likable and you create something highly personalized them, personalized for them. So you understand, you know, their family dynamic, you understand what they want, to, what they, what they want to achieve in life you know, some of their goals and aspirations and maybe even some of the things that kind of hold them back. you like some of the things that they're, they're struggling with. Like this is a great time to talk openly about stuff like that. So I think, I think, I think the, you know, the, the simple answer, it's highly personal Mm -hmm. and it's small. It's not big stuff. And I think the, I used to say this about email marketing. If you ever feel like you're one of 85,000 people that got the email, then you delete it. Right. (laughs) exactly right candidates feel the same way if they feel like this is just a cookie cutter deal then it's not for them they're going to feel that so we've got to figure out a way to pierce through that make them know that this we care about you you know whoever that is we care about you and it's almost a personal highly personalized experience for them
Yeah, I think I think I think getting getting comfortable with speed, thinking in seconds, you know, minutes, hours, thinking about response times. I think that automatically puts you ahead of a lot of people that have been in recruiting for a long time. I think about how you highly personalize things to that candidate and be become more human with them. You know, even you know, talk about yourself, like talk about your own family. Like so we're so in such a rush to get them into a job. It's like, hey, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So you understand you can ask me anything. Like I'm an open book. Like ask me anything about the hiring manager or about the team or about the job, the company. Like I'll answer it to the best of my ability. I think those things um, are different from the way that we've recruited in the past. So setting yourself apart is a part of understanding what did and didn't work in the past. It's a great question, and it's a lot of it comes down to the bets that they made. So take um, Amazon. Okay, so Amazon, you know, through the pandemic, they hired a bunch of people because we were ordering a bunch of stuff from Amazon, right? Well, when that started to kind of go down, well, you don't, you need less warehouse workers. So that that's right sizing based on uh, of, of, of of demand. The other part is a lot of these large tech companies have made bets. You know, let's say they make a, they, you know, in 2019 or 20 or whatever, they went out and hired a thousand people in blockchain. And, and then, you know, they realize now, okay, blockchain is not going to work for us now. Mm -hmm. it, it will eventually, but not now. Okay. Well, so then they lay off those, five, those thousand people. So they're right sizing the bets that they've made. So they'll, in that example, they'll right size the blockchain and then they'll, hire a thousand people for metaverse or AI or something else. So they'll make another bet. And that's what's typically happening with the large tech companies is it's, you're seeing people just, they're not transferable skills and transferable knowledge sets. And so they basically say, we don't need that. Lop, lop that off. We, we think we need this and then add it. So and it is weird. Like it is strange to see that like in one week you'll see, layoffs a riff and then all of a sudden jobs that got added from the exact same company and you're like what yeah <laughs>